สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So it is time for another Thai dessert. This one, if you like bubble tea, you're gonna like this because it's sort of like bubble tea. But with noodles, so they're jelly, chewy noodles in a light iced coconut milk. It's so good, so refreshing. In Thai, these are called l a c h o n g s i n g k a p o So l a c h o n g is our term for these green dessert noodles, and you might know them as chendol. And s i n g k a p o is Singapore, but there's actually no relation to Singapore, the country. There's a funny story. Well, not funny. There's an interesting story behind the name. I will write up all about that in the website post. So today's recipe is sponsored by Pine Brand, but not glass noodles. This time we have Pine Brand mung bean starch and tapioca starch. And yes, we're going to use both of these starches in our noodles today. Let's get started. So there are three things we have to make for this dessert: the syrup, the coconut milk, and the dessert. Sounds like a lot. They're all pretty quick. So I'm going to do the syrup first. So what I've got in here is some coconut water, which is actually optional. You can totally do this with plain water, but to add a little bit of an aroma and character, if you've got some coconut water, go ahead and use that. And then I'm going to infuse it with some, of course, pandan leaves. So pandan leaves are. For those of you who don't know, basically, our vanilla—it's the herb, I guess—that we infuse into basically all of our dessert. It has a nice floral, slightly coconutty aroma. You can buy it fresh or frozen. Frozen one works totally fine. I'm going to just use one of these, and one is quite long. Actually, I probably don't need one. Half is totally fine. And in order for it to fit into my pot, what we normally do is we just tie it into a knot, and. The process of tying it into a knot will also bruise the leaves and release all the aroma. Mm. So you can give it another scrunch to make sure that's really well bruised, and off it goes. So I'm going to turn this on and bring it to a simmer, and just let it simmer for about five minutes, ten minutes. Five minutes is good enough, I think, just until you can really smell that pandan aroma. I don't have that much liquid, but get in there, submerge yourself. And then, just so that I don't let everything evaporate away, I'm going to keep a cover on it. This is not the lid for this pot, but good enough. <laughs> Much better. Okay. Ah, oh, that smell of both coconut water and pandan leaves. So good. Now I'm just going to turn this off for now, and add the sugar. So if you're just using water, you may need to add a little bit more sugar. And also, uh, don't forget if you're using coconut water, choose 100% coconut water, not ones with sugar added. Okay? So that's that. I'm gonna now put this in a bowl and let it cool. The next thing we're gonna make is the coconut milk, which includes coconut milk. <laughs> I mean, we're not making coconut milk. We're gonna make the coconut milk portion of this thing. Second thing we're gonna do is to make the coconut milk component of this thing, which includes coconut milk. Ah, surprise! And basically, the reason why we're doing the syrup and the coconut milk separately is so that you can then customize how sweet you want the thing. Okay, so this is too rich, so we're gonna thin it out either with water or once again with coconut water because we already have it for the other one. So why not? Never hurts to add more flavor. And then again, we're gonna flavor this with our pandan leaves. So we're gonna again show you how to fold it in case you missed it the first time. It doesn't have to be a perfect knot. The purpose of the knot is to bruise and also to make it fit. So that goes in. And then I'm also gonna add just a little bit of salt, which is always needed in a Thai dessert to balance the sweetness. Turn this on and simmer it for again for five minutes just to infuse the pandan. And once again, because we're dealing with such a small amount of liquid, I don't want to lose half of it while it's simmering. The right size lid for the right size pot. Once it smells good, it's had about five minutes. You turn that off, and let this cool. Now the noodles, the most important part. I'm going to use two starches for this. The first one is tapioca starch, which is the main one, and then I'm also going to add a little bit of mung bean starch. Now you can do this with all tapioca, but if you think about it, tapioca is very chewy and elastic, like think bubble tea, right? But mung bean starch, you can think of the glass noodle texture for that, 
it's not quite that stretchy and chewy. And I think mixing a little bit in softens that chewiness a little bit, making it a nicer texture overall. Again, you can just use tapioca, but I think a little, both, a little bit of both is nice. And I am using Pine Bran for both of these starches, our sponsor today. And Pine Bran is a trusted brand that's been around in Thailand for many, many years. It's premium grade starch. They're made in a state-of-the-art facility, so you can be sure they're clean and pure with no contamination. And these starches are actually really, really versatile. There are lots of recipes that you can make with it. I'll link to some in the description below. And as a little bonus, what I love about it is the bags are really thick and sturdy. Unlike some other brands that you find at your Asian markets, which I have found out the hard way, the thin plastic leak very easily and you discover starches in your shopping bag. So this is a nice little bonus. So it's very easy. What you wanna do is first mix these two starches together. I wanna make sure I whisk this well together before I add the water. Okay. Now with the water, I've got a measured amount of water here, but I need to bring this to a full boil. But since it's a small amount, I'm just gonna do it in the microwave. Okay. While this is still hot, work pretty quickly. Put some food coloring in it. So typically this is green. So I'm just gonna do five drops of green. Hopefully that's enough. And with different brands of food coloring, it'll be different. Normally I'd say you can skip the food coloring if you want to, but it really doesn't look very good if it's just like a whole thing of white. Okay, while this is still hot, what you wanna do is drizzle it a little bit, give it a toss. And where the starch touches the water, it'll gel up and cook right away. And that's what you want. A little at a time, and you should use most of it, but you may not need all of it. And I'm just tossing just to help distribute the cooked starch. It does require a little bit of skills, but it's a really forgiving dough. If you make it too wet, you can add more flour. If you make it too dry, you can add more water. And you want to do it little by little just so that you don't accidentally add too much and also to get a nicer distribution of the dough. Okay, it's starting to clump together now, but it's still dry. The problem with the dough that's too dry is the noodles will be quite brittle and they'll break more easily. No big deal, they still cook up okay. So if anything, I try to err on the side of adding a little bit too much water and then adding extra starch to make it more manageable. Okay, I'm gonna stop here because it's starting to come together for me. And then what I'm gonna do now is go in with my hands and try to coax it together into a dough. Yeah, so I'm giving you an amount of water that's probably a little bit too much, but it's better to have a little too much than not enough. Okay. So now I'm gonna transfer it onto my work surface here. And I wanna dust my work surface with some tapioca starch to prevent it from sticking. And this dough, I'm telling you, is so forgiving. Every time I make it, it ends up a little different. Like first time was too dry and then it was too moist. I had to fix it and then it was this and that. But it cooks up perfectly every time. So it, like sometimes it was lumpy, sometimes it was smooth. But once you make it into noodles, turn it into the dessert, it all comes out like you can't even tell. See, and then when the consistency is right, it should come together into a dough that's relatively smooth. I have tiny lumps, which again, not something you have to worry about. Okay, so that's the dough. Now you can make this in advance, wrap it up, but do not refrigerate it. So ideally you wanna cook this the day you make it. I'll write more about storage and things like that in the, in the written recipe post, so you can check that out. All right, let's make noodles. So now that you've got this dough, I'm gonna just working with it half at a time and keep this half covered. And I'm going to generously dust my work surface. And then I forgot my rolling pin, like the most important tool of this recipe. So I'm going to use this wooden pestle that I have from my wooden mortar instead. It'll work, anything round. And then you want it to be quite thin. Don't worry about the shape, just get it into a rectangle of some sort. Um, two millimeters thick is what you're going for. 
and every once in a while you can dust it with a little more starch because you do not want this sticking. Yeah, I have to be careful with the edge. I always get the edges too thick. And then I'm going to cut this down into about two to three inch strips. And that is going to be the length of our noodles. I mean, at this point you can cut them to whatever, but I find that two to three inch is the ideal spot for it being easy to eat and not this big long thing where there's too much dough in your mouth. We're going to cut these into noodles and I would resist the urge to stack too many of them. I'm actually not going to stack them at all because I find that if I stack them and with the pressure of the knife, they tend to stick together more. So it takes a little more time, but save you time trying to pull them apart after. Guess how I learned that. Width wise, I think three to four millimeters and then take your time with it. Oh. Okay. Oh no. See, they start to stick together too much. And then once you're done with a strip, right away, toss them in some starch and pull them apart to make sure nothing is sticking. That's it. And then you just repeat with the rest of it. This is the time consuming part, but it'll be over soon. All right, so I've got a big pot of water here to boil our noodles. So while that's going, I want to talk about one other really, really important ingredient in this, and that is jackfruit, sweet jackfruit. If you can find fresh, that's even better. But here I just have canned. So these came from a can. Um, they're packed in syrup and you can find jackfruit at most Asian stores. Now you want to cut this down, but I have a, a tip, a very important tip for canned jackfruit is you want to cut them against the fiber. So jackfruit is very fibrous and the fibers run this way. When it's fresh, it's okay for you to cut it with the fiber, but when it's uh, canned, for some reason, the long fibers become just not very pleasant to eat. You know, so I find that if I cut it against the fiber, then I don't feel the fiber. And the jackfruit is gonna add a aroma, some sweetness, some burst of fruitiness to contrast the noodles. It's really quite important. Um, if you don't have jackfruit, you can try another sweet canned fruit instead. I don't know what would be good, but maybe, lychee. oh, lychee? Yeah, maybe lychee. Okay. So you want this rolling, rolling boil. If it's not hot enough, your noodles will dissolve rather than cook. And then for this amount of noodles, you can put them all in, but sprinkle them Ooh, so they don't stick together. I should have probably given this a little, another quick toss with some starch just to make sure they didn't stick together while they were sitting, but too late. And then once they go in, just give them a quick stir to again, make sure they don't stick together. And then once they float, then you start your timer about one to two minutes, depending on the thickness. If you've made them two millimeters, one minute, two minutes is totally fine. If you've accidentally rolled them a little too thick, you might need a little, a little bit more time. And I like to keep stirring them because they like to sort of aggregate on top and then don't get cooked evenly. So that's been one minute. I'm going to take a few pieces, just drop them in here and then very quickly paste. Yeah, they're good. Turn this off and then bloop. And then you also know that they're cooked if they are translucent. Look at that. Look how cool these look. Clear noodles. Wow. So now that you've got it in the water, you don't want to just keep lingering in the water. You want to act on it right away. Otherwise it starts swelling up and all that jazz. So let's get going. Let's put it all together. So ideally you want to eat this right away. Okay. Because if you leave this sitting just kind of like this, it'll eventually clump up together because it'll continue to absorb the moisture all around it. 
you can keep it in water for a little bit to prevent that from happening, but then it'll start to then absorb the water. So, you know, ideally you make it and then within a couple of hours you want to eat it. I will put all the detailed information of advanced prep and things like that in the website post. So definitely read that before you make it. Okay, we've got all of our components here, the noodles, the syrup, the coconut milk, the jackfruit, and the ice. That's the other most important thing. You cannot have this without a lot of ice, okay? So put that here. You put any amount of the noodles in, but it is quite rich. I think this, I mean, like for me, this is more than good enough. And then a little bit of jackfruit. I like a lot of jackfruit, some more jackfruit. And then with syrup and coconut, up to you. I'm gonna say about two tablespoons of syrup and then coconut milk. And in Thailand, when you see them sell this, you'll often see them sold just in a cup like this. And then when you buy it, then they add ice. Wow. So it doesn't look like enough liquid, but once you add the ice, it will be enough. Maybe a little more coconut milk. Um, pro tip, if at all possible, let it sit in this liquid for like 10, 15 minutes. It's actually good if you, um, have a party, you prep them all in a glass like this, and by the time you're done, 15 minutes go by before people eat it because now the noodles will get to absorb some of the sweetness and the flavor from the syrup and it makes the noodles taste better. So I know it's very finicky for ideal consumption timing, but you want the noodles in here for a little bit. And you want lots of ice because the ice will help completely chill everything, make it refreshing and also dilutes the richness of the coconut milk a little bit. Look how pretty. Okay, I'm feeling the glass. I'm waiting for the whole thing to be cold, cold, cold before I eat it. Because it's, trust me, it's not good when it's not cold at all. <laughs> it's like the difference between cold and not cold is like cold beer and room temperature beer. Okay. I'm gonna use a spoon. Some people use a straw, but I like the control of a spoon. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So good! So the jackfruit really makes it. You kind of have to have something fruity. Don't just think I'm just gonna make the noodles. It's not the same. the coconut milk with the coconut water and all the ice, it's so refreshing. Like I can just drink that. And the aroma of the pandan as well, very, very, like this smells like Thailand to me. And the noodles are just perfectly chewy. The combination of the mung bean starch and tapioca starch, and it's so satisfying. If you love like bubble tea chewiness, you are going to love this. If I had a big bubble tea straw, I would eat this way too fast. So that's another good thing about the spoon as well. It helps you slow down. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, I definitely want to see a photo, post it to social media, and tag me at Hot Thai Kitchen everywhere. A special thanks to our Patreon member for making this show possible. If you want to know all about that and how you can watch my videos ad-free and get bonus content, I will link to more details in the description below. Special thanks to Pine Brand, our sponsor, and I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.